All right, in this first lesson of our Windows Setup Collection, we're going to go ahead and download and install Ruby. The first thing we need to do is to determine whether our Windows system is 32-bit or 64-bit. Now, if you don't know how to find that out, you have to head to your computer's control panel. You can access it usually through your main start menu. Simply typing in control panel will bring it up. And the process will be a little bit different on older versions of Windows, but getting to the control panel is, is fairly simple on all of them. In the control panel, again, things like the icons may change or may look different depending on your version of Windows, but the process will stay fairly similar. In the control panel, you want to go to system and security, and then system right here. And on this page that pops up, under system type, it's going to tell you what version of Windows you're running. You can see here, I'm running a 64-bit system. So whatever number is listed here, 32 or 64, simply memorize it and commit it to memory. It's a good thing to know. All right, so I'm going to close out of this. And here I am in Chrome, which is my browser of choice. You can use whatever you'd like. And let's Google Ruby installer. The very first link that should pop up is this Ruby installer for Windows page on rubyinstaller.org. That's where we want to head. And on this page, we'll see a big bright red download button. That sounds good. Let's go there. And on this downloads page, you'll see a different collection of versions of Ruby. So everything that we have here is simply different versions of the language. Just like with most technological things, the greater the number is, the more recent the version is. So the numbers here at the top, Ruby, Ruby 2.3.1 is the latest one. Ruby 2.0.0 is the older one. Next to each pair of numbers, you'll also see these parentheses. X64 means that's the 64-bit version. So if you have a 64-bit Windows system, you can download this. If you have a 32-bit one, you can download the one without parentheses. And generally speaking, you should just download the one that's the most latest version of the language. If you're watching these tutorials much later in the future, you obviously might have a more recent version of Ruby. For the most part, things should stay fairly stable. There may be one or two lessons here and there that have deprecated methods and things like that. But I'll try to warn you if that kind of stuff is going to happen. For now, I'm just going to download the latest one as of recording, which is Ruby 2.3.1. I have a 64-bit system, so I'm going to choose this option. And let's head to my downloads folder when it's done. So let's, let me just open this. It's a fairly small file. It's about um, 18 megabytes, so it should be pretty quick. In fact, I have two, two copies here. So here I have it, Ruby installer 2.3.1. It's an exe ex executable. We can double click that to launch the installation process. Click run. It's going to ask you for your language. I'm going to choose English. First page here is just going to be the documentation and the legal text. You can click I accept the license, then click next. Here it's going to offer you the default folder where it would like to install Ruby. I just think the standard here right in your main C directory is totally fine, but if you want to set it up a custom on your computer, you certainly can. We're also going to have three options here, three checkboxes here. The first one you can ignore, that just installs an additional toolkit if you want to build graphical interfaces with Ruby. That's something that you can look into down the line, but it's not covered in this course. The second two checkboxes though, or the, the second and third rather, you do want to check. What this is going to do is add Ruby to your path, which basically means when we're in the command prompt, which is how we interact with the computer by giving it commands, we'll see that in the next lesson. This just means that Ruby will run from any directory in your computer. You don't have to navigate to this directory right here to run Ruby files. And the next one here, the third one is fairly similar. That just means that it's going to associate the Ruby files, which end with the extension .rb, with this installation of Ruby. Uh, basically, some programmers prefer to have multiple versions of a language installed on a computer. And uh, in our case, we're only going to have one version of Ruby. That's what we're going to stick with for the entire course. And that just is going to associate all Ruby files with this current installation that we're doing, which for me is 2.3.1. So for the basic beginner, don't worry about it. Just select the second and third checkboxes here. Then click Install. Process should be very quick, maybe 10 to 15 seconds. Here you can see I'm already done. So I'm going to click Finish. All right. And if I head to C, which is the directory where I installed it in, we can see that Ruby has popped up right here. And this is basically it. This is the folder where we can access um, all of the Ruby installation files. So at this point, that's really all we need to do. This is a little bit of a precursor to the next lesson, but what I would also recommend is uh, going to your command prompt. You can access that by, again, going to your start menu and searching for command prompt. It should look something like this. It should just be a big, boring, blank screen, black screen with just a flashing cursor. And this is where we enter commands to the computer. 
And there's just two things I would like you to do here just to ensure that Ruby is properly installed. You can type in Ruby, and remember it's available at any directory in, in our computer. You can see here I'm not navigated directly to my C folder, I'm navigated to this users folder, but the great thing about how we installed it with that second checkbox is that Ruby is now available at any directory in the computer. So we can type in Ruby and then dash V. That dash V at the end, and there's a space in the middle by the way, that dash V is called a flag. It basically modifies what we're asking the program to do. So what we're asking Ruby here is for the version. Dash V is just the shortcut for the version. So when I execute this, I should get the version of Ruby. You can see here it says 2.3.1, which is exactly what we uh, wanted to install. So as soon as you get that this thing pops up, uh, your version of course may be different, but if you get this message back, that means that the Ruby has successfully installed, so everything is perfect. And one more thing that I wanna do here is type in IRB. That's a, an additional program that Ruby installs called Interactive Ruby. That's basically going to allow us to do really quick tests with Ruby. Interactive Ruby is sort of like a sandbox or a playground where you can just open it and try out really quick Ruby commands and methods. It's nothing that's saved, so it's not for permanent project work. It's not for building anything long term, but just kind of a thing to open up and try out a few lines of Ruby before you close. And it's a separate program that comes bundled with Ruby that we'll be using a couple times throughout this course. And so once again with IRB, just to check that it's properly installed, we can ask it for its version. And if it gives us back a proper answer, we know that it is successfully installed. And predictably, we can do that with dash V, the exact same flag. And you can see here it says the version of IRB is 0.9.6. Again, your version numbers here might be slightly different. That's totally A-OK. -okay. As long as you're getting a response back from the prompt, that, then you know that it's responding to your command successfully. And that means that both Ruby and IRB are successfully installed. And we are all good to go. So that takes care of the Ruby installation. And in the next lesson, we'll focus on installing the Atom text editor, which is how we're going to be writing our code. That's where we're actually going to be typing the Ruby code now that we've installed the Ruby interpreter and the accompanying IRB playground program. All right, so I'll see you in the next lesson.